Yeah, so we can, we'll try to sketch a timeline of, uh, let's say, Arabia's religions based on the epigraphic evidence. Okay, okay. Uh, so we know in ancient South Arabia, before the fourth century, uh, you had a kind of traditional Arabian religion uh, with many different gods, polytheism. And then in the fourth century, you have a shift towards monotheism. Yes. Veneration of one god who's called Rahmanan, right? Uh, and a the identity of these monotheists. Rahmanan, meaning, sorry to interrupt, but the merciful or the... Yes, the merciful. Yes, this extra an at the end of the word is the definite article in Sabaic, the ancient language of Yemen. And so Rahmanan in Arabic would be Ar-Rahman, right? Now, uh, so you have the shift in the fourth century in South Arabia towards monotheism. There's a debate on the identity of these monotheists. Are they Jewish? Are they Judaizing monotheists? That's something that uh, we don't need to go into now, though. But it's clear that they are monotheists. They The, the uh, other gods disappear from official public inscriptions, and you only have the veneration of one god. Now, if we look at the epigraphic record throughout the Arabian Peninsula, we see a similar trend. So in inscriptions before the 4th century CE, throughout the Hejaz, actually throughout all of Arabia, you have invocations to many gods, right? So you can see there, the Nabataean inscription, uh, there's a Nabataean inscription from uh, from Hijra, from Adayin Saleh, that opens and invokes Dushara, and then it goes on to invoke Allah from Omanu, and uh, Manat with her Aisha, and Hubal, so you have all of the gods that are familiar from the Arabic Islamic tradition being mentioned in one inscription, right? And the Nabat and you could kind of characterize. I mean, the 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 primary god for the Nabataeans, their national god, was Bushara. This was their uh, main deity, but they had no problem calling upon the other gods in their inscriptions as well. Now, what happens is as we look at the and this is in, in a nice article published in 2022 by Leila Narme. She looks at the Nabataean and the Nabateo Arabic inscriptions from the Hejaz, uh, mostly focusing on inscriptions from the northern Hejaz, because that's where most of the surveying has taken mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. And she sees a, a sort of narrowing of the gods. So by the 4th, 5th century, early 5th century, you get uh, uh, three primary deities that are mentioned. And they're not mentioned frequently. They mainly occur in personal names, which is uh, a difficult map, the value of which is difficult to assess. Yes, yes, Talk about yes. that later. Because people, yeah, okay, go on. Yeah, but the three gods are Al-Uzze, Manah, and al right? So these, these are the ones we know from the Quran, right? From sort but of something, something else happened, right? As you continue to move forward in time, when you get to the end of the 5th century, and the 6th century, and by this time, the Arabic script has fully evolved, uh, the uh, Nabateo Arabic script has fully evolved into the Arabic script. And once you reach this period, all the gods disappear, and all you have is devotion to one god, which is, and the time she wrote this article was Al-Ilah. Yes. Right? Al-Ilah. Now, since this article was written, I think, in 2018, but it didn't appear in publication to, until, uh, or 2017, but it didn't appear in publication until 2022. So it's important to realize that uh, that gap from preparing an article to publication, because between 2017 and 2022, uh, dozens of new Paleo-Arabic inscriptions have been discovered from the Hijaz. And what they continue to record around, let's say, the area of Tabuk, between Tabuk and Medina, is a is the devotion to one god, but no longer spelled Al-Ilah, but spelled Alif, Lam, Ha, or Lam, Ha, clearly Allah, right? Now, the question was, what about the southern part of the Hejaz? What about the area around Mecca? Right? Was this area a pagan a reservation, to use right, uh, right. Professor Azmi's term. Right? Azmi. Yeah. Yes. yeah, was this a pagan reservation? There were, we didn't, there were no surveys, nobody had explored the area, so we simply had no inscriptions from it. Mm -hmm. So our field work led to the discovery of more inscriptions now from the Mecca Pyat area, and yes. these inscriptions only record devotion to Alif, Lam, Lam, Ha, that is Allah. Yes. Right? So it continues this kind of monotheistic trend. So, if we were to build an image based on the material evidence, the epigraphic record, we would say that the change that happened in South Arabia, fourth century shift to monotheism, mm -hmm. seemed to actually be a peninsula-wide phenomenon, mm -hmm. where you have this slow shift to monotheism in the Hejaz as well, 
from the where you have a transition transition period between the fourth and fifth centuries, and then once you get to the end of the fifth and the sixth century, all you get in the inscriptions are the are, are records or indications to alif lam lam ha or alif lam ha or lam ha, all being variants reflecting different scribal schools uh, strategies of spelling the name Allah. Now, uh, well, that's that's a shocking result, and what we need to do then is take that result and sort of bring it into conversation with what the Quran is attesting. Yes, yes. Right, because the because Quran, Quran speaks about uh, opponents of the Prophet who acknowledge Allah, but yeah. then in certain occasions or for certain reasons return to their gods or yes. their demons as their caricatures right. sometimes. Or, yes. yeah. Absolutely. And we can't, we can't use these sort of cheap explanations by saying, oh, pagans just didn't know how to write. Only monotheists knew how to write. Because we see from the inscriptional record that pagans did know how to write. Yes, 50, they were producing inscriptions. <laughs> they were mentioning all the gods, and then they yes. stopped, they stopped doing that. Yes, and uh, we need to explain that that kind of uh, change. One, you know, I don't have an answer. I don't think we have we have materials at this point to have an answer yet to to reconcile these two uh, uh, sources. But one can imagine that the and this would be following Patricia Crona's argumentation. That these deity, that these deities, Allah, Manat, or if we were to use the old Hijazi pronunciation, Mano and Al Uzze, that these deities were somehow once monotheism had spread across the peninsula, they were reimagined as angels or some kind of subordinate beings. Mm -hmm. And there was really devotion only to one God, and that these beings could be seen as intercessors, right? That you mm -hmm. could somehow make invocations to them. Um, but ultimately, you're worshiping only on, right? Yeah. And of course, the Quran says, if you ask the pagans <laughs> yeah. who created the heavens and the earth, they will say, oh, oh, right? Yeah. And so that 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 much is reflected in the inscriptional record. One of the things that we see also in the inscriptional record, despite these, despite the text being monotheistic, only invoking God, seeking the forgiveness, they use the, the root rafara. Right, so it's the same root that's used in the Islamic tradition as well, seeking the forgiveness of Allah in pre-Islamic times, calling Him Rabb, right, which is a uh, uh, part of this package of Hebrew Aramaic liturgical terms that come into Arabia with the advent of monotheism. Meaning, Lord, they, they urge they urge the reader uh, to obey God. Right, all of these concepts are sort of alien to the. Uh, let's say polytheistic Arabian religion that we that, that's apparent from the inscriptions that they produced centuries before that, right? These yes. seem to be monotheistic concepts. Yes. So yes. some kind of religious revolution seemed to have happened in the Hijaz in the century and in, in the two centuries preceding the rise of Islam that led to these new religious formulas, these new ways of expressing uh, piety and the relationship between you know individuals and their deity. Um, but we can't know at this moment what exactly it was. We only see, again, its shadow in the inscriptions. 